I'm going to present about the hidden autobahns brain, invisible barriers, and why flow matters. So at the beginning of my PhD, I made brain research my career and gardening my hobby. This year I'm on sabbatical, so I make gardening my job and brain research my hobby. And I'm here to present you the common concepts between gardening and the brain ventricular system. So uh, in the brain ventricles, um, we have um, cavities which are flooded by water. In the garden, we have cans that are flooded by water, and the fluid dynamics are basically the same. We have water flowing in, water flowing through, water flowing out. And now, if we cut the brain in half, we can see the surface of the ventricle, and we can see that there's, the ventricle covers the hypothalamic nuclei. And these are very important for circadian oscillations. They also have function in feeding. They have function in reproduction. So when we do the same with a pumpkin from my garden, we see the cavities are covered by long hairs, and they hold precious stuff, which is relevant for feeding, for oscillation, and for reproduction. So now, I didn't come here to tell you that we are all pumpkin heads, so what's different? <laughs> um, so the, it, the surface of the brain, when we look at very high resolution under a microscope, we can see that the hairs are really, really tiny and um, we have billions of them on the surface and they constantly beat to move the fluid and the flow is actually forming streets along the surface um, and um, the streets can deliver precious material to very specific addresses in the brain so when we map the flow, we have a color code for the mapping um, for the direction, we can see it's basically like the German Autobahn so it is, transport is happening at high speed, it's highly efficient, and it's also tightly regulated. And when you look at the white flow field here, number four, you can see sometimes to get from one area to another area, we need to take a big detour and there's no way around, like the German Autobahn. <laughs> so what's also very interesting is that sometimes you find a funny local phenomenon, like, for example, um, through traffic for transport is... Uh, it's not allowed at night. So the same is actually also happening in the map of the brain. So at the end of the night, the cilia would just speed in a different direction and they would reroute the transport. So um, now, whenever we have a stunning phenomenon like this, we want to know, how is that even possible? So I had to study uh, new technologies and uh, I characterized the cilia motion and I also characterized some intracellular structures. So here on the colored microscopy, you can see we have a meshwork of fibers, and they are very tightly organized. They are holding on to the nuclei in, in blue here, you can see the overlay. And um, on their back, they anchor the motile cilia, so they can give some direction and stability for the beating. So whenever we discover a stunning new phenomenon, we are asking the question, why is it doing this? So to answer that, we need to find a disease that's associated. So we find a disease where the cilia um, anchoring, where the cilia anchoring is um, not very well organized. So what's happening is that cilia are beating a little bit here, they are beating a little bit there, and a little bit everywhere. But when we look at the transport, so you can see here uh, the transport, in the wild type, what we usually see in the normal state is that the flow is just going down into the ventricle. But in the mutant on the right, so whenever we have the disease, the flow is suddenly blocked by a fluid barrier. And that's created because the cilia are beating in the wrong direction. So when I finish my sabbatical and I make gardening my hobby again and not my job anymore, what's going to happen? I will have barely any time, I will do a little bit here, a little bit there, there will be debris everywhere. So we will have blocked flow, like in the diseased brain, and we have tissue turning bad. So why would I do it? And well, the answer is, I would definitely go back to research, because what the research will bring is treatment for seizures, and especially the early life epilepsies, where we see that and um, brain developmental disorders and any other disorder that is caused by misguided cilia-generated flow. Thank you.